So now I will explain why we uh, erected this dew condenser and how we can collect these drops of dew. Every drop of dew counts. This is. <laughs> okay, so uh, that's in English. So I hope you will understand my English. And I will first uh, give a few words about the OPUR, OPUR organization. In French, OPUR means Organisation pour l'utilisation de la rosée. International Organization for the Utilization. So it was founded 20 years ago, exactly, in June. <laughs> uh, and the objectives are use due. Uh, dew has long been ignored. That's not a lot of water, but that's a lot of water when you don't have anything else. So dew can help, and dew helps to give water. And this was to explore and develop inexpensive and practical uh, source of water. In fact, Opur uh, wants to unite individuals and organization for these goals. And it's not only a scientific organization. The first vice president was an, an artist, you know. Uh, and I, I will show you some of his uh, paintings and uh, sculpture uh, with you. Is it okay? I think, maybe. Uh, uh, too, too, too close, huh? <laughs> Okay. In fact, this organization, we have laymen and we have also scientists and artists. So that's a broad range of interest. So now I go to the first question, what is dew? Uh, dew is not fog. Eh? Fog, that small uh, water drops floating in the air. Dew is a more complex phenomenon. First, we can see in the literature, and I think one on the oldest citation of dew, that's in the Bible, where in the Ecclesiastes, you say vanities of vanities, say the preacher, all is vanity. In fact, in, in Hebrew, the term is Hebel, it means dew. So the translation was vanity, but in fact, that's the word dew. So in fact, when you say vanity, all is vanity it means dew, all is dew. And you understand why? Because dew water, at the first, when the sun comes, it evaporates. So it seems very bright and it evaporates. In Japan, uh, the Japanese wrote a number of haikus, and that's interesting because you can see the. Oh, would it work? <laughs> okay. You see that that's in French. So you can translate. It means that, in fact, this world is like dew uh, and so what. It means that vanity does the same, uh, the same meaning. And this is something else. This is an haiku dedicated to um, pure water. Dew is very pure water. So that's another meaning uh, of dew. So you can, you can bath yourself in, in dew water, and you'll be uh, young forever, for instance. <laughs> Uh, we have also the alchemist. So that's interesting because to uh, transmute lead into gold, you need uh, dew water. And you have to collect dew water during the full moon. And that's interesting. That's the book which is uh, named Mutus Liber in Latin. It means the damn book. And it, it is from the 17th century. And you see that you have the sun and the moon and we have these dew collectors. It means that uh, you collect dew during the night, and after, uh, uh, after a clear day, a sunny day. So that's interesting. It means that you need a clear sky, and you, you need night. And you see that the dew condenser, you have poles, and you have cloth on it. And after, you twist the cloth to collect water. So the, that's the, what the alchemists were doing, or are still doing, because some 
uh, are still working in this area. That the first scientific uh, study of Dew, it was a doctor in Montpellier, Charles Leroy, and he understood something very uh, fundamental, that depending on temperature, you can, the uh, air can absorb water, the higher the temperature, uh, the more water, uh, So, he, okay, okay. <laughs> becomes com complex. Uh, so, the, this doctor understood that uh, the higher the temperature, the more the water you can put in, in air. And he made a very interesting experiment taking an empty bottle of wine uh, in, the, in the afternoon and closing it and putting uh, near outside near his window. In the morning, there was condensation inside the bottle. That means that when you cool uh, the humid air inside the bottle, there is a temperature, which is the dew point temperature, where the, the air it, it's at 100% relative humidity, and below which you must, uh, air cannot hold water in it, and you can condense. So this was the definition and the finding of the dew point. Uh, another book, which is by Wells, this was in the middle of the 19th century. Wells made in, in non, many experiments in the suburb of London. He was a layman, he was, and uh, he was working at night. So he spent nearly one year uh, and you can see this dew condenser putting an er on herbs uh, above the ground. But he, gave, he got sick because working at night during one year, that's a lot. He was working also, uh, walking to his friend's uh, house. So he had to stop the experiment. But that's very interesting. I got this, you see the dew drop and the mist, dews in cities. He made a lot of experiments to understand what is dew. Now, I made. A, uh, I was also co-author or author of a few books about Dew. This is a, a La Poursuite des Fontaines Aériennes. That's in French. Uh, that's rather a novel. So that uh, there was a city in Crimea, Feodosia, uh, where there is a dew condenser, and people thought that the ancient Greeks collected dew in their 101 fountains. This is not exactly true, but there is still a dew condenser there. So if you want to know, you have to buy the book. <laughs> this is a, another book. This is the, the Russian works and Soviet works on the dew, uh, dew collection, that is a production of water from the air. And uh, because the, the Soviets made a lot of experiments to collect dew. And this is a recent uh, book by, by, uh, that I wrote uh, last year. This is, uh, well, a collection of work. It is not a collection of work. It is uh, how dew is forming, how you co can collect dew, etc., etc. Est-ce que ça marche, ça? Non, bon. Ah, il faut que je reste sous la lumière. Voilà, c'est compliqué, là. Bon, euh, je, fais, je fais ce que je peux là. Alors, hein. euh, bon, dew formation. In fact, you need an you need, you need an air which is humid, that is, which contains water, and you have to uh, cool it so that you reach 100% uh, relative humidity. So the question is, how much water can be dissolved in air? So I'll explain you. Pourquoi ça ne marche pas Bon. bon. Voilà. So, you, this was the work by Leroy, so we discussed already. And now I will ask you a, a few questions. So, we said that dew falls during the night. And why does dew fall during the night? The, 
another question is how the substrate on which U forms can cool. So you have, is it with the thermal contact with the cold air ground? Yes or no? No. Wrong. <laughs> is it cooled by the wind? No. Oh, oh no, what, is it, what is it? Is it because it radiates heat in space, what we call the infrared radiation? Yes. And this is why do you announce the, go, the good weather? Because you need a clear sky. And you, you have to radiate uh, the infrared radiation, radiate heat uh, in, the, in the air. But air has not to radiate too much heat. If not, you cannot cool. So uh, dew will form only during the clear night. This, way, this is why dew announces the good weather, or the good weather announces dew, which is exactly the same. So there, there is a very strong correlation. If you look at the dewy nights and the sunny days, there is nearly 100% correlation. I, I did it. Huh? I tried in Ajaccio. It's something like 99%. So you need a clear sky, and you, you need uh, also something else, as you will see. Now I will show you what is dew, and I will show you how dew forms. These are dew drops. It is accelerated, uh, accelerated about 100 times. And at the same time, you can hear the noise, the, the sound that dew makes when the drops touch. It's what we call the cry of dew. So it makes a small sound, tac, 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 tac. And you see that dew water propagates in the, on the substrate. So you can imagine that for a physicist, there is a lot of interesting features to study with this kind of uh, pattern. Uh, we, 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 this pattern we call is self-similar in time, and there are many interesting features. So I, I won't discuss this point here, but... Uh, so each dewdrops grows, and when they grow, they, uh, at some time they touch, they touch each other. When they touch, they fusion, they coalesce, and they... So uh, I don't know how to say Hmm? Gather. They, gather. they gather, and at the same time, they, they gather because they grow in the third dimension. So this is a two-dimensional substrate, but there is an interesting property due to the third dimension. So it's a mix, very interesting mix-up for the physicist. <clears throat> so you can imagine, for instance, that you color, you make a dye on one drop, and uh, the question is how this dye will propagate on the substrate. It's a kind of diffusion, but it's not diffusion. Okay, so I won't go to, I won't discuss too long of this uh, characteristic. Now I will tell you a few words about the dew water quality. Uh, if you want to drink dew water, you have to know whether it is drinkable, potable or not. So first chemistry, physical chemical properties, the, just an example, this is a chemical analysis that I did in Bordeaux, so near the Atlantic Ocean. And when you see the different ions, calcium, magnesium, you see you have calcium, magnesium. Okay, chloride, the pH for the acidity, etc. And now you can compare this analysis with uh, uh, water, which is water for babies, which is O du Mouruk. It is uh, not very mineralized. And if you look at the different concentration of ions, that's interesting because you can see a comparable concentration. For instance, calcium, uh, uh, magnesium, 0.2 milligram per liter. Here you have 0.20. Sodium, 2.3. Sodium, 2.8. Uh, 
calcium 0.5, 1.8, there is a factor of 2. Potassium 0 0 0.6, 0 0.40, etc. The pH, that is the acidity, is 5.9 for nearly 6 for the uh, for dew. Here it is 6, you see, nearly the same value. Uh, resistivity, that's something very important because that's the, the, the concentration of ions in water. You need to have some, uh, some ions in water. If not, it can extract, extract your ions. And if, for example, babies are drinking uh, no mineralized uh, water, they can die. That's a, a, an osmotic shock. And here, that's 31,000 ohm centimeter. And here, that's above 40,000, you see. So if you drink, if, well, the best should be to collect dew to um, feel the taste of dew. But now if you can't, you can buy moruk. I don't have shares anyway. That's, <laughs> that's very good water anyway for the taste. Now the biological properties. When dew is collected outside, so of course you will have dust falling on the condenser. That's why there are ions when you uh, uh, analyze the chemistry, but also you can have spores from the plants. Alors, sometimes uh, when dew forms on leaves, you, you can, the, the small mushrooms, fungal disease can develop. This is the, the case, for instance, for potatoes leaves. Uh, but also the plant, they can absorb water. So, uh, during dry springs in some countries like West Africa or China also, uh, dew water helps the young plants to grow. This is well known. Now on collectors, you will get vegetal spores from the trees and also, but you can also have possible contamination by uh, animals, by insects. And that's something I've seen in the morning, you have ants, and flies, they drink water from the dew, from dew collectors. So in principle, it's better to uh, sterilize dew water if you want to drink it. Now, you have, naturally, the dew collectors, they are sterilized by UV because since uh, dew forms the night where before it, the day was sunny, the UV of the sun uh, sterilized the collectors. So usually, uh, water is drinkable. Now, what is an ideal dew condenser? It has, it has to radiate a lot of heat in the sky that is good radiative properties, high, what we call high emissivity. It has to be smooth to make the drops slide because usually the drops, they remain pinned. So it means uh, in the morning, uh, the sun will make the drops evaporate and you'll get nothing. Now, it has to be light because if it is heavy, uh, it will take a long time for the collectors to cool down to the dew point. And it, has, it needs a large surface open to the sky. So the sky has to be well visible. That is, we need a large sky view. Uh, if you put, you see, a, near a skyscraper, for instance, a dew is difficult to form because you have the infrared radiation of the walls of the skyscraper that prevents cooling. Uh, now it has to be protected from wind. Why? Because the wind, in fact, that's air. And air is warmer than the condenser. So when, he, when there is wind, you warm the condenser. That's not uh, usually when there is wind, you feel cold. And that's due to the evaporation uh, of water on your skin. Here, that's just upside down. So this goes against the common sense, but wind doesn't cool, wind eats the condenser. And also, you have to thermally insulate from the ground because the ground is warmer than the condenser. Now you have to collect dew drops, and that's a real problem because the drops they remain pinned. And uh, only large drops, because their weight compensate the pinning forces at the perimeter, only the large drops can slide. So we have different solutions. The first solution 
is to look at the edges of the condenser. And the edges, you know, the drops, they grow faster. Why do they grow faster? Because they are not in competition with each other. On the surface, each drops collect humidity from the air, but they are in competition. When you are on the side, they can get more moisture. So they grow faster. And I will show you a movie. This is a, a vertical surface, which is cooled from below. And, you could, and it is accelerated by 128. And you can see that the drops are really forming faster on the edge here and there. And since they are growing faster, they detach sooner and they act as natural wipers. So a condenser with edge effect, with a lot of edge, will, be, uh, will have a better yield. <clears throat> so uh, here there are three kinds of condense, dew condenser. One is a reference, it's a plane, which is inclined at 30 degrees. Uh, you have an egg box, so egg box is hollow, so it prevents wind to warm the condenser, so that's a good. Uh, and so the yield is 20% larger than the plane. Now if you have the same kind of egg box, with, but with, uh, it's an origami, so it's hollow, but it has a lot of edges. And so the yield can be increased up to 400%. And that's due to this wind, to this uh, windshield effect, the windshield, wipers effect. Now, you can also enhance the coalescence between the drops. The idea it is, instead of having a, a myriad, a lot of tiny droplets, let's have only a few large droplets. And to do that, what we are considering as grooves, the grooves, they can connect the drops uh, between them and uh, increase the coalescence. So here you, uh, there is a movie on the left uh, that's a smooth surface. Uh, well, here. And the right, the same surface with micro grooves. You see that's about 100 microns uh, spacing and 50 microns uh, depth. And you see that's really impressive. On the left, you have tiny drops that remain peeled. On the right, you have a few large drops. And that's because the drops, they are connected by the grooves, by the water which is in the grooves. So uh, we have different solutions then to, uh, to uh, collect a dew. So I will give you now a few examples. Uh, that's the way the alchemists, the alchemists were working, I showed you before. So clouds directed to the open sky on poles. And to collect water, you twist, uh, you twist uh, the cloth. So you need energy, in fact, to, to do that. Uh, this is the biocrust, so that's interesting also. This was, for instance, in the Negev Desert. That's very useful because uh, this biocrust, that's cyanide bacteria, uh, the thickness is about five millimeters to one centimeter, and they stabilize the sand. And once the sand is stabilized, you have no more dunes, and you have other plants uh, that can uh, grow, and the desert is no more a desert, in fact. And this is fed by dew. In the Negev desert, there, there is about 350 days of dew per, per year. Nearly every night uh, you get dew. The plants, they have stomat, stomatos, stomates, st oh, one on the stomat, <laughs> mm, stomata. And so they can collect dew water from this stomata. Now that's a, a picture I took in the Negev uh, in July. It was 48 Celsius during the day. And you see that early morning, 
uh, on the plastic roof, you have dew water flowing from the roofs on the ground. Uh, now, okay, I will show you some achievements of the Opera uh, Association. Alors, condenser on plain surfaces. This is the first big planar condenser, the first big condenser we, uh, we erected. It was in Ajaccio. So, uh, in order to get more juice, we were, we, we, we were wiping the, the drops. This is in Morocco. So, different kind of condenser. One condenser on ground, condenser on roof, here it is, and condenser on terraces. This is in Chile, in uh, Chile, that, that's roofs uh, that collect uh, dew water. And that's important due because in this uh, country there is a lack of water and there are trucks, as you can see, that brings water to, to the people. And so any more water uh, prevent, uh, this, prevent uh, these trucks to, uh, for coming. And that's also in Chile, and that's interesting to, to see that uh, we have produced an additive to paints that makes more dew. Uh, and uh, the, this uh, additive um, emits more energy in the sky, so cooling is better. And also it, is, it makes the drops sliding better. And that's the comparison between a part of the roof uh, that's... Uh, which, where there is a paint with additive and a little part where there is nothing. And you see here, you have nearly no dew forming and no dew collection. Here you have dew forming on the, on the slopes and collected in the ridges. So even though the average slope of the roof is low, it is something like 20 degrees, you can, you can get and collect water. Now that the school in India, you have seen in the movie, something which is not in the movie, that eventually the children, they drink this water. So the water is put in a well, in a cistern, more exactly, after filtering. And uh, instead of going to the, to, to the well, which is a few kilometers from their home, and take water to the school, the children, they can have water directly. And when there is extra water, it is used for the trees and the plants. Now, this is in a small island in Croatia, so in the Mediterranean Sea, Adriatic, and that's a, that's a roof which uh, collects water, and during the first years we had a, a device, a meteo system, and you know everything about meteo from the Ecole Polytechnique, I guess. <laughs> and so we were measuring relative humidity, temperature, etc. and with this pluviometer, measuring water, and the water was then put in this reservoir. Uh, now we go to another kind of condenser, which is hollow condenser, to prevent wind effect. And so, so the, 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 the simplest condon hollow condenser, that's a cone, hollow cone. So uh, whatever is the wind direction, uh, the, inside the cone, the, there will be no wind. So this is something uh, on the left here, uh, <coughs> built by architects, by uh, pupils, uh, architects. And this is something we have built uh, in the south of France. Uh, this is something which has been built in uh, West Africa, in Bena. And that's interesting because it is made with the materials that are locally available. And the yield is very high, and the, the water uh, which uh, was, uh, uh, which can be collected this way is used for the second uh, harvest of mice. They, they, make, they make two uh, mice harvest in Bénin, and during the second they need water. So they bring water with trucks, uh, but they can also, uh, they can also uh, collect dew. Uh, this is the alchemist. No, we at Opur, we have been uh, some people ask us to, 
to have this foil, a special foil to condense uh, dew water. And that's, this is in Vercor, so this is near Grenoble, and these people, they make interesting uh, dew, uh, dew condenser, you see? Because that's a plastic trash in the middle to collect water. You see how it is made? It's a... C'est très astucieux. <laughs> now, that's something I did with an artist in Fijac. And the goal was to collect dew, collect dew, but not rain. And so you cannot use uh, something hollow. So the idea was to, what I proposed, it was to make a thin plastic sheet of polyethylene. And the polyethylene is interesting because it is relatively trans transparent to the infrared. So if it is thin, uh, you can have, it can be uh, released to the sky through this thin sheet, and you can still uh, cool the, the condenser. And when it rains, you see that uh, you, you don't get the, the, the raindrops. Of here, there is a, a, a space uh, for the humid air to come inside. And you, as you can see, there is water forming. So you have also the egg box and origami, so I showed you before. Egg box, interesting, but you see, uh, dew at the top is lost, and there are nearly no edges. But origami has many edges, so uh, it's more efficient. Dew plants also in India, uh, so with ridges. So we have seen the movie. Uh, and this is the last, c'était the bottling dew plant. The idea is uh, to collect dew and rain when it rains. And that's something interesting that, as you can see, all the dew collectors can harvest rain, little rain that usually are lost, and also fog. Uh, when you have fog coming, the fog, uh, fog droplets can be uh, caught, can, be, can stick to the to the dew condenser and be collected. So the idea here is to uh, collect dew and rain when there is rain, filter and put in bottles, in pots, and sale to the community. And the price is about one third of the price uh, in the area, the price of the bottles. So that the satellite view. Uh, now, I have a few uh, examples of painting and sculptures. One by Jean-Paul Ruiz. Jean-Paul Ruiz was uh, the first vice president, president of Opus, so we founded the association. And this is a painting he did that I bought, huh? that's in my apartment <laughs> at home. And this was what he did, he put uh, pigments uh, on the cloth, in toile, the peinture, c'est quoi? Hmm? On canvas. Uh, on canvas. So pigment on the canvas, put outside, and you made the work, you know. <laughs> and that's interesting. That's, you see, because you can see that he, there is a kind of droplets. Uh, uh, and that's, another, that's a sculpture for you. So uh, in French, that cueillette de rosé. So you, you can pick up a dew <laughs> this way. Uh, this is another artist, uh, Coralie Mayer. So if you look carefully, that's uh, made with soldiers, plastic soldiers. Yeah. That's uh, something to wait for the bus uh, here. Ah, oh, it is. And so you can collect dew at the same time from Hervé Naon, in the south of France, both. This is something we did for two exhibitions. One is Montreal and one in Lyon. So that's flowers that collect dew. Well, you can, that's interesting for the scientists. You see that here you have the styrofoam to thermally insulate from below. And here you have the, the foil, the dew condensing foil. Uh, and this is the last, but not the least. Uh, it is something made with uh, Sidney Wong and Dominique Pesson. To, uh, I've seen that Dominique Pesson was uh, here two days ago. Yes. Yesterday? Yes. And so the, the, uh, the idea is the following. 
uh, when you condense, you can produce a film or droplets. Uh, you produce a film if water wets the surface. That's difficult to maintain outside because of greasy pollution, but you, you can do it. For instance, uh, and so if it is a film, if it's transparent, you, you don't see, you don't see it. And now, if it if it is droplets, you can see it because because it looks white. Uh, this is an experiment. It looks white. So by making uh, what we call hydrophobic coating, hydrophobic coating uh, here and there, and hydrophilic there, hydrophobic here, hydrophilic there, when you breathe on it, or when air is sufficiently humid, you see flowers or drawings that you, uh, appearing. Now if you eat it, every, everything disappears. So this was at Espace Pierre Gilles de Gênes for one year. I think some of you have seen it. So uh, I'm nearly going to the end. If you want to know more, you can look at our website, Opur, Opur in English. <laughs> uh, and these books were two hours in French. Uh, and one is in English. Thank you very much. I will just show you a few collectors. Thank you very much. Or the difference in different contexts in cities? Ah, yes, okay. Uh, in cities, and, okay. In, in order to have dew, you need uh, to have uh, the air, the cold, uh, as cold as possible. And so this means that if you compare, for instance, dew in the cities and dew in the suburb outside the cities, even though the climate is the same, the, the sky is the same, and the wind is nearly the same you will get less dew in the cities because the air in the cities is warmer. It's what we call the heat island. And we have performed um, a study a few years ago in Paris, so collecting dew at ESPCI, that is in the Quartier Latin, huh, on the Montagne Saint Geneviève, and uh, comparing with dew near Orly, uh, nearly the, the same, about 15 kilometers, uh, there was about four times less due in Paris, downtown, than in uh, early. Even though it was, uh, the, the meteor conditions were nearly the same. And when measuring the air temperature in Paris and the air temperature in early during the night, uh, air temperature in Paris was a few degrees above. And so this means that uh, it's much more difficult to get the dew point because the dew point corresponds to the amount of water in the air and it is nearly the same in Paris and outside Paris. So this means that to get you in Paris, you have to cool, say, four or five degrees from the air during the night. And in early, you have to cool only by 0.5 or one degree. And, and what about the taste? Ah, the Paris? taste. Uh, alors, I, I didn't taste, I didn't try a dew water in Paris. I tried dew water in Bordeaux. It was in my garden, so, <laughs> and just in front of a vineyard, so it's okay. <laughs> no special taste, anyway. Uh, in Paris, uh, dew water is not very clear. Uh, it's, it is, if when you look at the chemical analysis, it is potable. It is not no lead, not so much sulfur. It corresponds to the uh, who World Earth uh, Organization uh, criteria. But 
what you get, you get a lot of dust. Uh, I think that's carbon dust floating sometimes. And this, we, we, we cannot measure carbon because uh, for a simple reason that carbon is also coming from the CO2 in the air. So it's very difficult to make, uh, to, to know what is the carbon from the diesel and the carbon from the, the CO2 in you. But in a way, it seems to be polluted by carbon. Yes, it means that you is not so much, in general, don't really speaking, it is not uh, much polluted. We have performed, and others also have performed, many chemical analyses in the world. And um, usually, except for a few, few uh, ions, the, you can drinking, chemically speaking. Yeah. But according to what you are saying, yeah, there is a difference. There is a big difference because fog, you know, fog droplets, nucleates, grows from seeds, and the, these seeds are pollution seeds. So, uh, by definition, the concentration of pollutants in fog is important. Dew is different. You produce dew on a surface, and the pollution comes first from the absorption of, uh, of water from the air, but that's not a lot, and also from the particles that settles from the air uh, on the substrate. Uh, these particles, do you have sodium chloride due to the ocean, to the sea, even though you are at 100 kilometers from the sea, you have sodium chloride floating in the air, so this so it gives you sodium and chloride. You have magnesium chloride, which is also coming from the sea. And you have also the, the dust, the dust that carbon, uh, CaCO3, uh, carbon, uh, carbon carbonate, uh, no, calcium carbonate, that coming from the roads and, and the buildings. And there is a chemical reaction between the acidity of dew and these particles to lower the pH of dew. So there is a co not complex, but there is the different chemical reaction in dew, which makes the, the acidity of dew less than uh, uh, more than rain, for instance. Rain is acidic because there are no dust in it to uh, increase the pH. And the pollutants, they are less because uh, that's only the, 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 the aerosol, the dust that are coming from the air. So usually, the, it is less polluted. The problem with dew, it is uh, often is low mineralization. But even though, even uh, that's near the Atlantic Ocean in Bordeaux, that the mineralization is the less. But it's still on the order of uh, spring water you can buy. Now we have obtained high mineralization, uh, for instance, in Morocco, because particles are coming from the desert. But it's still potable. So, so th there's a, a high mineralization in dew water because in I, fog, uh, there are a lot of minerals in in uh, dew. Not a lot, no, because oh, not, a lot. not a lot because there's distilled water, you know. Okay, so it's like there's distilled water, water which is enriched of ions from by absorbing from the air, that is SO2, uh, sulfate, nitrates. Nitrates. There are more nitrates that in, uh, there, there are nitrates in, but that's not very well. And also, you have the particles that settle down, uh, that is carbon, um, uh, carbonate, uh, calcium, calcium carbonate, uh, silica also, uh, potassium also, nitrates from the agriculture, but only very few. No pesticide. Uh, not yet. <laughs> Not pesticides. There, there was a question. Oh. Uh, two questions. Uh, um, 
how many liters of dew you can collect? How many? How many liters of dew ah. you can collect per, per meter square per day? Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. Competitive uh, uh, compared with um, uh, inverse osmosis, for instance, uh, mm -hmm. that you use for uh, having drinkable water. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, dew is interesting because you don't, uh, it is a passive, you can, you can make it active, but it is less interesting. If it is active, you can buy, you can buy an active dew condenser, but you need, for instance, about, I think, uh, four or five kilowatt hour per liter of water. So you need energy. Uh, you have to plug in or put uh, some diesel uh, engine, etc. Now, when it is passive dew, uh, as I showed you, the energy is, is uh, zero. It is free, no carbon, clean, okay. But you have not so much energy. I, I didn't show you the, this point, but uh, there is a balance between the energy you can uh, send to the sky and the energy you get from the sky, and the balance when air is sufficiently humid to get dew, give you about 65, 60, 65 watt per square meters. To transform the vapor, which is molecules are very agitated, to liquid where it is denser, you need uh, a lot of cooling energy, which is that's a latent heat. It is 2,500 joule per gram. Okay, that's a lot. So this means that the available energy and the latent heat if I neglect the, 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 the heat exchange, at the maximum you'll get 0.57 liter per square meter per day, per night. 0.7, that's the maximum. That's on the order. Now that's a peak. You, you can get it. That's a peak. Uh, usually you get less, 0 0.5, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. On, a, on one year, in a, in a place where dew is frequent, you have an average on 0 0.2, 0 0.3 liter per square meter. So that's not a lot, yeah. but that's free. So this means that to get water, you need a large surface. But uh, uh, per, per, what, per day or per, per night? Per night, yes, in average. Now, as I told you, uh, <clears throat> the dew collectors, they are studied to collect tiny droplets. So this means that you'll get you will get also, when there is mist or fog, you'll get it. When there is a little rain, you see, the, 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 the roofs, they are wet, but there is no water flowing, you will get also. So practically speaking, on the dew collectors, you get a lot of water. We have performed some, exp some uh, studies in uh, Azerbaijan, where we can increase by a factor of two the water collector from the air by using this, uh, uh, these dew collectors. Because usually uh, below, say, 0.5 millimeter, 0.3 millimeters, water is not collected. Here with this with dew collector, we collect it. So it's in Baku, exactly. The status of the school in India, it started in 2006, I think you said? Yes. Uh, it's still working, it's huh? Still working. It's still working, yes. More or less, well, I don't know. No, I don't know exactly because the, uh, it was very sad, but uh, Professor Shahan passed away if, if, uh, three years ago. So now it's more difficult to follow the, the projects uh, in India. It's uh, difficult to find a student, to find somebody uh, continuing the work. We tried, but uh, there are people uh, working Systematically, they are making, you know, the, in China, in India, there are many groups working to make uh, chemical analysis and also isotope, isotope analysis from the, the ratio of oxygen 18, oxygen 16, and uh, deuterium and hydrogen. You, you, you can, um, you can uh, investigate, you can know where water comes from whether it comes from the ocean, from the ground, from etc. So now there are 
several groups working on it. So that's, it. that's to know the cycle of water, you know. And uh, especially the Chinese, they are very active with you uh, at the present time. Because there, there are a lot of deserts huh, in, the, in the north of, in, of China. But in India, I cannot tell exactly how, is the, how are the projects. Um, it's there's no other urgent questions. I would like to thank you very much. Uh,